workshop and conference organized by the Department of Commerce, University of Kerala. Today, we have with us Dr. Sabuj Kumar Mandal, who is Associate Professor of IIT Madras. He completed a PhD in Economics from the Institute for Social and Economic Change and the University of Mysore. He is also the recipient of numerous awards for his academic and professional excellence. He has publishings in several journals and is an aspirant researcher. Dr. Sabuj Kumar has his own courses on NP. Swayam form on econometrics. He has already given us a very fruitful session the last day. We welcome you, sir, today on the session on allocation of qualitative response models in equity, debt, and other choices of financing. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Bhagavati. And thank you, Viju, once again for giving me this opportunity. So I, I hope the audience, uh, you, you have got a very fruitful sessions in this workshops, right? So this is the last session. Yes, sir. This is the last, last session. Last session. Okay. Okay. So as I said, uh, uh, in our previous class, in the previous session, so what I will do today, today, first, uh, I will take one data set and I will uh, give you a hands-on demonstration using the statistical software data to estimate how to estimate the logit and profit model. And then we will also learn how to uh, interpret the results that uh, we'll get after estimation. Okay. And if you have any queries, uh, please ask me in between because today I have another meeting exactly on seven, seven o'clock. So I have to uh, strictly uh, leave by seven or seven five. I'm very sorry for that. So kindly ask your doubts. Uh, in between when I discuss the concepts, right? So I will be sharing the screen once again. Uh, this is. Is this screen visible? Yes, sir, it is visible. Are you able to say yes, this is visible? Yeah, so this is basically this is basically the state of software that uh, we are going to deal with. And what we'll do, we will estimate one model uh, using a particular data set. And in this data set, let me take you to the data set. This data is basically on. Look at this data. This data is, is basically on uh, married women's labor force participation. So that means after marriage, whether a particular woman will participate in the labor force or not. That is why the dependent variable here is INLF in labor force, right? In labor force and which is a binary uh, variable. If the woman has participated in the labor force, then we'll take the value one. And if the woman has not participated in the labor force, then we'll put zero, right? So the same example, the structure is same. So whether it is women's labor force participation or firms way of financing everywhere, the basic structure is basically same. So if you understand the model by this uh, example, you can apply the same technique wherever you want. There is absolutely no problem, right? So what we'll do, we will try to understand what are the factors that basically determine whether a married woman will participate in the labor force or not. And for example, for simplicity's sake, we will take only three to four explanatory variables. Let us say that the married woman's age, what is the level of education, then how many kids uh, below six years of age that particular married woman is having. Because as you know, if the woman has more number of kids, then it would be very difficult to participate in the labor force. Then we'll also take what is the husband's level of education. We, hypoth we may hypothesize a positive or negative relationship, more the education of the husband, uh, more would be the more likely would be the uh, woman uh, in the participating in labor force. It could be other way around also. And also husband wage, how much the husband is earning. If the husband is already earning sufficient amount, then probably the married woman may not participate in the labor force. And these are the couple of variables that we hypothesize uh, as a determinant of women labor force participation. And then what we have to do, 
in this box look at this box this is called command box here we have to put the command and the command for estimating a logit model is very simple the first thing we have to write is logit then the dependent variable in the labor force and then one by one you have to introduce your dependent variables sorry independent variables so let us say this is age education of the married woman and then uh, number of kids less than six years of age and then husband's education and husband's wage so these are the variables so one thing you have to keep in mind that we need to introduce the variable here in the same way they are introduced in the data set so you should not make any mistake in writing the uh, uh, variable so this is the command first thing is logic then the dependent variable and then the set of independent variables so if you specify and after that you have to put enter now this is the result this is the result data is giving you now from this result what we need to understand is basically to how to interpret the coefficients right how to interpret the coefficient now those who are having a basic understanding on standard econometric models uh, i will take one or two from the audience and i will request them to interpret the coefficient for example let's say age has a negative coefficient which is significant also so how do you interpret this coefficient anyone from the audience So oh, that means, sir, can I answer, sir? So that means, sir, age. Yes, please. Is, uh, uh, yes, sir, uh, sir, good evening. That means, uh, age, uh, yeah. the more the higher the age, it is negatively influence the my dependent variable, that is uh, the labor. That means, higher the age, uh, it is uh, uh, less chance of participation in labor. That I mean that. But uh, thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Devi Prasad. But you are not using this particular coefficient value. Uh, Min oh, uh, minus that 0 0.05. Uh, 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 that is one unit of change in, will happen uh, in uh, dependent variable by changing on the 0 0.05 change in uh, independent. Uh, can you repeat one second? Instead of dependent on independent, I have already specified my dependent variable. I have also specified my that uh, means I am saying very simple point uh, zero five change in my age factor is influencing uh, my participation, so the likelihood participation in labor. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Anyone else apart from uh, Mr. Devi Prasad? Anyone else? Those who already have some kind of uh, understanding in econometrics, kindly go ahead. Anyone else from the audience? If you share your understanding, that would be better actually. Like the way Mr. Devi Prasad also shared. No one wants to share anything. So, so that means Mr. Devi Prasad is the only person in the audience who had experience in econometrics, previous understanding, and all others are new. No one is speaking anything. Why? Please share your views. This is a simple econometric model I have estimated. You might have explained or is interpreted this coefficient previously also. So based on your previous knowledge, you can simply interpret this coefficient. I just want another one or two responses from the that audience. That is also statistically significant. That means uh, it, uh, it definitely has an impact. Age has an impact on the uh, labor force. That's yeah, yeah, that is all. That is all right. But I am. Uh, I, I want another uh, one or two more uh, interpretations from the audience. Okay, since no one is interested to say it, so let me uh, let me tell you what exactly yeah, is the yeah. We can yeah. say it's positive and statistically significant, but uh, the magnitude of the factor is very. Magnitude of uh, the coefficient? Hello? Yeah. Yes, sir, I'm Rajini here. Uh, 
yes rajini yeah. yes rajini i, I can see all other variables are negatively influencing on uh, dependent variable why are you thinking about all other variables i'm ask, like asking like to age, on age yeah age age is a uh, negatively influencing on uh, dependent variable that is what mr devi prasad has already said i am asking anyone to use this specific value and then interpret like uh, it is uh, 0.5 to 5 to 56% is change the change in age that 1% change in age negatively influencing on uh, dependent variable to 0.5 0.05 okay okay fine 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 okay. that's all that's enough that's okay enough. sir thank you now thank you for sharing your views now why why i asked you to interpret this coefficient because that is the common mistake what we make while interpreting the logic or probit type of model immediately after estimation see when we estimate a standard model then these coefficients are direct marginal effects so that means in 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 case of a standard model which we estimate by OLS, where our model equal model where our model is y equals to alpha plus beta x, then the the interpretation of beta is exactly the same way what you have interpreted. That means for one unit change in let's say age, women's labor force participation probability of women labor force participation goes down by this much unit. Okay. And you can use log or percentage interpretation if both the sides, if I have taken log, all the dip, all independent variables and the dependent variable both should be expressed in log. Otherwise, we cannot use the percentage interpretation. You have to clearly keep in mind. So percentage interpretation is as good as taking the elasticity interpretation and elasticity interpretation is valid if and only if you have a double lug model that means dependent variable and all other independent variables are expressed in terms of logarithm if that is not the case then we cannot interpret this as a percentage change in this model we have not taken age education and other variables in logarithmic form that is why we cannot use the percentage interpretation now if I say that for a unit change in age, labor probability of labor force participation goes down by this much unit, that interpretation is also wrong. Because if you take that interpretation, that means you are taking this value as a direct marginal effect. Now, why this interpretation is wrong? See, when I introduced the model, we said that in logic model, probability PI is expressed as 1 by 1 plus e to the power minus alpha plus beta xi. So that means what do you want here? You want if you do a simple mathematics, those who are familiar with mathematics, the interpretation what we want here is differentiating pi with respect to xi. So that means delta pi delta xi. Is that correct? So, partial differentiation of the probability function with respect to x1, x2, x3, that means age, education and all these things. Now, you can check clearly by doing simple mathematics that if you differentiate pi function with respect to age or x, that is not equals to beta. Okay. Since pi equals to 1 by 1 plus e to the power minus alpha plus beta xi, if you differentiate pi with respect to x, what you will get? You will get beta hat multiplied by pi hat into 1 minus pi hat. pi hat means this is after estimating what is the value. If that is the case, I cannot use this value as direct marginal effect. That you have to keep in your mind very clearly. You should never forget this. How is it coming? It is coming from the from purely from the probability expression. Now I will pause here and ask if you have any doubt there. It's a simple mathematics I am asking. Why we cannot take this 0 0.05 as direct marginal effect? So you have to do the simple mathematics. 
you take pi equals to 1 by 1 plus e to the power minus alpha plus beta xi, differentiate pi with respect to xi. You will get pi, sorry, beta hat into pi into 1 minus pi. And when you actually estimate the model in place of pi, you have to use pi hat. Now, to get the marginal effect, that is why in logit and probit type of model, we need to specify a special command to get the marginal effect, and that command is mfx. mfx. So, this is the command. And if you put mfx, and then you see the marginal effect, that means this minus 0 0.01, this is actually the marginal effect. Sir, your voice is breaking. I request the participants to kindly wait. Our resource person is facing some technical issues. Yes. DY DX. Okay. Am I audible? Hello. Uh, sir, now we are audible, sir. Now we are audible. So, which part you missed? Uh, you... Yeah, so last two minutes, uh, it was a break. Uh, I mean, technical issues was there. So okay, please, please, please. so I will just repeat the last two minutes. What I'm saying that instead of using this value as direct marginal effect, we have to put MFX command in, in Stata to get the marginal effect. Why this is so? Because we have to go back and see what is the model we are estimating? Our starting point of the model is pi equals to 1 by 1 plus e to the power minus alpha plus beta xi. If you want to get the marginal effect, that means you want to differentiate pi with respect to xi. And if you differentiate pi with respect to xi, what you will get? You will get beta hat into pi hat into 1 minus pi hat. So that means this measure is not a direct marginal effect. Rather, after putting MFX, what we are getting here, this is the marginal effect. This value we can take and we can interpret this as for a unit change in age, probability of a married woman labor force participation goes down by 0 0.01 unit. Okay, for a unit change in age. Right now, see, Stata has already calculated y. So that means that means Stata first what Stata first calculate that pi hat, and then they multiply pi hat with one minus pi hat. This is basically the pi hat value, and you have to take beta hat from here. This is basically this is basically the the, the beta hat value. Okay, so del pi del xi is this multiplied by this into 1 minus of this. That is why never ever take this value as a direct marginal effect in qualitative response model. That you have to clearly keep in mind. From this model, I can only say that age and women's labor force participation, they are negatively related. As age increases, women's labor force participation becomes less likely. That is what I can say. From the education coefficient, what I can say? That as education increases, married women becomes more likely to participate in the labor force. But I cannot take this value as marginal effect. What is the marginal effect? Marginal effect is here. For a unit change in education, probability of a married women's labor force participation increases by 0 0.06 unit. Similarly, all other coefficients, you have to take only to see whether there is positive relation or negative relation with married women's participation. And the second table, this table is specifically giving you the marginal effect, that's all. Now, once you estimate the model, now the first thing that comes to our mind, how best is the model as far as the goodness of it is concerned. 
in our previous class we were saying discussing that while in the standard model we we discuss or we, we examine the goodness of fit by r square the r square concept is not at all valid in this model what do we need to do we need to have a similar concept look at here they have introduced a model in a measure called pseudo r square and how is this pseudo r square calculated it is calculated as you may kindly write it down in your notebook so this pseudo r square yeah pseudo yes are you asking anything hello i'm saying you may kindly write down the pseudo r square measure what i'm saying now the pseudo r square equals to 1 minus 1 minus in the numerator there would be log likelihood unrestricted and in the denominator there would be log likelihood restricted that is all 1 minus minus a fraction for which the numerator is log likelihood unrestricted and denominator would be log likelihood restricted now what is log likelihood unrestricted and what is log likelihood restricted log likelihood unrestricted means that likelihood value in which we have introduced all the explanatory variable so that is why here the unrestricted log likelihood value is this minus 459.06 and what is the restricted restricted is z, this one which is corresponding to i interact uh, iteration 0 so minus 514 why this is called restricted because we have put a restriction over here that all the coefficients are simultaneously equals to 0 okay so compared to that scenario when i introduce this five number of independent variable as explanatory variable well, how much i i get as improvement so that is why restricted and unrestricted likelihood values are calculated to compute my pseudo r square if you take this value as log likelihood unrestricted if you take this value as log likelihood restricted and use the formula 1 minus log likelihood unrestricted divided by log likelihood restricted you will get exactly this value and this value is called pseudo r square okay this is the value 0 0.10 right you can get another prediction another r square value which is count r square following the technique what we have discussed in our previous class okay now apart from the pseudo r square we need to also see the overall significance of the model overall significance of the model see here when we estimate a standard econometric model here immediately after estimation you will see f statistic because f statistic gives you the overall significance of the model in standard econometric model but in case of qualitative response model that if statistic is not available rather what data will supply you one log likelihood ratio statistic or likelihood ratio statistic how is that defined that is again defined as two into you can again write it down two into log likelihood unrestricted minus log likelihood restricted very simple formula two within the bracket log likelihood unrestricted minus log likelihood restricted so if you apply that formula you will get this value 111.65 and that that log likelihood ratio follows a chi-square distribution with degrees of freedom equals to number of explanatory variable in the unrestricted model so in the unrestricted model how many variables you have included one two three four five so that is why chi square will follow five degrees of freedom and look at here 
probability greater than chi square this is actually the p value since the p value is 0 0.0000 we can say that lr chi square is highly significant lower the p value higher is the level of significance we can say that lr square chi square is significant at 1% level so that means the model is overall significant that is the difference between qualitative response model and the standard econometric model in standard econometric model it is given by f statistic the overall significance here it is given by lr chi square likelihood ratio statistic which follows a chi square distribution with five degrees of freedom because we have five explanatory variable here so that means instead of relying on more on pseudo r square because r square concept is not having a straightforward interpretation in this context what we should look at is actually the overall significance of the model so the model is overall significant and then we have uh, we have variables like age education number of kids and husbands wage as significant variable husband education is not significantly affecting the married woman's labor force participation that is what i am saying i will give you a pause again and you may kindly ask if you have any doubt in understanding these statistical measures do you have any doubt how to estimate the model logit model and how to interpret the coefficient please ask me if you have any doubt sir it's clear it's okay nicely explained so okay yeah sir i have a doubt yeah please ankita sir can you please explain once again like difference between these coefficients values and the marginal uh, values i have just a bit confusion regarding this okay what i am saying when you estimate a model in standard econometric model the equation is y equals to alpha plus beta x right y equals to alpha plus beta x if you apply simple partial differentiation del y del x equals to beta very simple y equals to alpha plus beta x just partially differentiate y you will immediately get beta that is why we can take the beta as direct measure of marginal effect in standard econometric model but in case of qualitative response model what is our equation our equation is pi equals to 1 by 1 plus e to the power minus alpha plus beta xi in that context if you differentiate the dependent variable pi with respect to xi that means delta pi delta xi equals to beta hat into pi hat into 1 minus pi hat instead of being only beta hat that means we should multiply pi hat with 1 minus pi hat with the beta hat what is pi hat pi hat is basically this value that means after estimating the logit model predicted value of the dependent variable is given by 0.57 if you use this value as pi hat then you can easily calculate taking this value as your beta hat take this as beta hat take this as pi hat and use the formula beta hat into pi hat into 1 minus pi hat you will get this value that is what is called marginal effect is this clear ankita yes sir yeah thank you sir you have to use a little bit of mathematics and you have to uh, go back and see what is the uh, uh, model that you are estimating so always keep in mind that in logit model it is pi equals to 1 plus 1 by e to the power minus alpha plus beta xi that is the model we are estimating not y equals to alpha plus beta xi okay so if you don't have any other doubts from this estimation part then what i will do i will share another file where actually i will take some examples from the finance literature okay so let me clear this window i will no longer use data i will take only a couple of results from finance uh, literature to show you what is the application of this type of qualitative response model in finance and if you want to estimate profit then again same concept instead of logit you have to just put profit 
so i will just show you p r o b i t probit then other command is same in labor force then age then education then your uh, kids lt6 then uh, husband's education then husband's wage that's it so again you will get this one this is the probit estimate and again you have to use the mfx command to get this one the marginal effect so logit and probit they are very simple to estimate but you have to keep in mind when to apply logit when to apply probit that again depends on your data structure if you have too many observation at the tail then logit is better than probit in the mid region both are equivalent so depending on your data structure you have to select logit and probit don't select the model randomly like any other students okay so i will put clear and then exit i will exit from stata and now what i'll do i will share another data another basically uh, uh, file showing the ppts so uh, let me take this one so i will show you this uh, sorry so i will share again uh, this one so i'll go this is this clear is this clear is this visible yes sir visible so these are the examples we already discussed yesterday these are some of the examples why do some firms list their stocks in bsc while others do not why do some stocks pay dividends while others do not why do some firms go for debt financing while others go for maybe something else and what factors affect whether countries default on their sovereign debt i can extend this list of example there are in number of examples that you can think of why do some banks default while some others perform well so using this logit and probit you can actually estimate the probability of bankruptcy okay probability of banks getting a uh, default okay so there are so many examples that we can say it okay there are hundreds of examples that we can get from the finance literature where actually we can apply this logit and probit model okay now uh the interestingly if you take banking literature we can actually there is a literature called distance to default so using this technique we can actually estimate what is the distance so that means how close or how far a bank's position is to become a default so fantastic so that is called distance to default function so there are several examples we can take from banking finance other disciplines where we have uh, a lot many applications of qualitative response model that is why i have taken specifically this particular econometric model for our discussion now this picture uh, shows what is the problem of problem of linear probability model and here in the x axis we are measuring market capitalization and in the y axis we are measuring the probability of probability uh, uh, that the firm will pay you dividend now you see as market capitalization increases since it is a linear function at this range this is 0 and this is 1 at this range if your market capitalization is here so if you draw a perpendicular line you will arrive at here where the predicted probability is actually greater than 1 so that means at this level of market capitalization the probability that a firm will give you dividend it is more than 1 which is quite nonsensical a probability greater than 1 does not make any sense similarly if your market capitalization is very low look at at this level and if you draw a perpendicular that will touch the line here which shows actually negative probability of paying you dividend 
that also does not make any sense so for meaningful interpretation our probability must lie between zero and one so that is the problem of linear probability model that is why next you take this model log it and prove it which actually hypothesize a non-linear relationship between the two non-linear relationship between the two market capitalization and the probability that the firm will pay dividend or not and these two so that means it is nicely actually it should not touch here it will never touch the axis if you know the concept from mathematics there is something called asymptotic distribution so this will approach both the axis asymptotically but it will never touch okay it will never touch so that is the idea this model overcomes the uh, problem of the linear probability model now this is some example what i have taken right this is some example what i have taken see here uh, the idea is whether the firm will go for external financing or not whether the firm will go for external financing or not so there are three alternative situations we have estimated three models actually depending on which particular variable is included or not included see here it is called deficit this deficit variable is defined as what is your earning and what is your expenditure now if your earning is more than expenditure then you have a surplus you don't have deficit if your earning is less than your expenditure then actually you will have a deficit and borrowing from the pecking order hypothesis so that means if you have less cash in hand then you are likely to borrow if you are financially so sound if you have so much of cash in your hand then basically you are less likely to borrow so depending on the deficit depending on the sign and significance of the deficit variable we can actually determine whether picking order hypothesis i hope you are aware of picking order hypothesis in finance right are you aware of picking order hypothesis hello i'm asking a specific question related to finance uh, which is called picking order hypothesis whether you are aware of this hypothesis or not So can you say something on uh, picking order hypothesis? I think. Uh, so budget. if you are not aware of the hypothesis, see basically picking order hypothesis says that when the firm decides about the mode of finance, then firm will first go for that mode of finance which is less costly. So it is believed that external financing is costly for the firm. So that is why as long as the firm is healthy in terms of its own financial resources, firm will not go for the external mode of financing. This is a simple model where my dependent variable is taking only two value, whether the firm has gone for external financing or not. If they have gone for external financing, then the dependent variable takes one. If they have not gone for external financing, then that is called zero, right? That is the simple model. So that means I have only two options open for the firm. And I am trying to explain the probability whether the firm will go for external mode of financing or not with the help of deficit. And deficit also, I am dividing as positive deficit and negative positive deficit. So positive deficit means actually you really have a deficit negative deficit means you are actually having surplus so here in the two models i have not included surplus in the third model i have included the surplus look at this surplus surplus is negatively correlated and within the bracket this is t value which shows the variable is significant or not so it is highly significant because the t value is 3.23 so that in more the surplus you have in your hand you are less likely to go for external financing, which shows some kind of support for the pecking order hypothesis. 
okay picking order hypothesis and here the deficits are also showing some kind of negative relationship so that means whether if you have more or less deficit what will happen to your probability of external mode of financing that is basically determined from this simple model similarly if you have assets what is the level of assets so the asset is again it is showing some kind of positive impact but they are not significant okay then what is the industry asset growth well, in which industry you are operating then previous mode of financing so on and so forth okay previous mode of financing previous mode of financing is actually uh, determining whether you will go for uh, external financing or not if you have gone it previously then it is showing that this year also you are likely to go for uh, external financing now inclusion of these variables you have to keep in mind these are all coming from the finance literature as an econometrician i have nothing to do here so, so, so can i refer, can be able to check the performance of a corporate with external financing in this model what is the performance, performance of it performance of corporates it means uh, when we compare the performance with the external financing the performance is increased with external financing or decreased with external financing that kind yes, of yes it is that you can check but then that model won't be a uh, qualitative response model so that is a simple uh, simple model where your independent variable will become binary because in that case you will simply measure performance let's say by profitability so your dependent variable is profitability or return on asset or anything your dependent variable is not binary then in the set of independent variable you have mode of financing which will take two values one and zero so it will act like a standard dummy variable model okay okay so that the context what i'm discussing here uh, you have asked an interesting question so that means the question what you raised in that case if you want to see whether the mode of financing has to has anything to do with corporate performance performance you can measure there are several variables you can measure profit efficiency you can measure profitability you can measure simple efficiency you can ask, uh, measure return on asset you can measure by tobin skew ratio there are n number of measures that you can use to measure corporate uh, performance then in the right hand side you will have the firm's age the firm's uh, r and d the firm's uh, corporate structure the firm's board structure then within the set of explanatory variable you would like to include one variable which is mode of finance so that will take one if the firm has gone for external financing that will take zero if the firm has not gone for external financing but that will be a standard dummy variable model not right. the profit or logic kind of context what we are discussing here can i intervene so if i convert that suppose my return on assets or i take any variable then i said if a positive yeah. performance then one negative performance zero convert it to binary then i can measure use a logic model that i can use but you must provide some logic why you have measured that particular return on asset as one that particular message as zero so that should be acceptable to all for example you are saying return on asset if it is more than five lakhs then it is one less than five lakhs it is zero then immediately uh, the the uh, referee will ask you the question why you have taken five lakhs as a benchmark category what is the justification that you can provide for selecting 5 lakhs return on asset as the threshold if you have a justification from the existing literature or if you have a justification of your own then it is absolutely fine econometrics should not be used just for the sake of use econometrics is basically a tool your major emphasis should be given on finance so what is the finance literature that you are discussing what is the finance literature that you have consulted before highlighting a particular research question is this clear yes sir yeah as far as methodology is concerned absolutely no problem you can define that with your dependent variable and you can apply logic or profit model but what i am saying a referee will ask you a question okay you have applied a logic model using a threshold point five lakhs of our return on assay 
what is the justification for that sir uh, one doubt please sir uh, regarding yeah. choice of this logit and project uh, profit model and uh, then yeah. we have to put uh, the data set of dependent variable only in the tail side is it am i am i able to uh, clear it no no you have you have nothing to do with your data they have no control over data you first collect the data and then you see how many percentage of your sample are taking external finance if it is 10% that means you are at the percentage of sample means uh, that uh, dependent variable or what uh, you mean by that percentage of sample that, that is what i am saying items. percentage of firms gone for external financing which is the dependent variable yes okay that's all yeah similarly if it happens that only 10% of firms have gone for depend uh, external mode of financing then you are at the lower tail it may also happen that 90% of your firms they have gone for external financing that means you are at the upper tail in both the cases we must apply a logit model because logit model has a flatter tail which is better to capture the tail than the profit but if it so happen that 40% of the firms gone for external financing another 60% of the firm not gone for external financing you are actually not in the tail but you are in the meat region where well, you can actually apply both logit and profit it's clear it's absolutely clear thank yeah. you sir yeah now okay sorry uh, this is this is another equation this is multinomial logic this is multinomial logic and here why i am using multinomial logic because now i have extended i have extended my a uh, dependent uh, variable into multiple options so external financing can also be of many types as i discussed yesterday you may go for public uh, issuing public bond you may go for issuing uh, public equity or private equity or you may not at all uh, gone for external financing so if you take not going for external financing as benchmark category zero then going for debt is one going for equity is two going for public bond is uh, let's say three going for private equity it's a four so multiple such options okay so in this example we have taken that many options open for in front of the firms that is why this model has now become multinomial logic and in multinomial logic always we have to take one category as base category so what we will be estimating here we will be estimating probability of going for a particular mode of finance compared to the base category if your base category is internal finance then i have to interpret the coefficient as for example let's say unleveraged z score what is z score i will explain later so this z score is basically those who are from the finance literature you might have heard about altman z score which basically uh, determine the financial health of the company which is used as an indicator of risk what is the risk whether the firm is high risk firm or low risk firm generally a high risk firm will only go for the costliest mode of finance that means high risk firm only will issue equity in the market because they know that they have no other option open but to uh, but to go for uh, equity mode of finance so that is the last option so if you are highly risk farmer uh, so a firm you will go for this so from here from this altman z score then what i can what i can uh, this is equity equation let's say this is bond equation so that means there are three modes of finance internal finance equity finance and bond finance how i will interpret this coefficient i will interpret the coefficient as since the coefficient attached with the z score is positive i will say that as z score increases as z score increases that means as financial health increases probability that the firm will go for equity form finance compared to internal finance is actually increases that means that is positive that means that shows no support for the pecking order hypothesis because pecking order hypothesis says if your risk increases actually you should go for 
Yeah, that is yeah, it is correct. Actually, it is showing evidence in support of uh, uh, picking order hypothesis. As your risk increases, you are more likely to go for equity finance. Okay, more likely to go for equity finance. But this variable is also this variable is also significant. That means as risk increases, bond finance. That means mode of finance through issuing bond. Compared to internal finance is also increasing, is also increasing, and we assume that bond is little safer than uh, than issuing equity in the market. Okay, issuing equity in the market. Likewise, we have we have date here. What happens to uh, firms' probability of going for external finance compared to the base category? That is given by this variable point one. 1.72. It shows as debt increases, then the firm is more likely to go for equity finance. Likewise, R and D, whether you have any venture back, what is the age of the firm, then what is the uh, plan, property and equipment, what is industry growth, what is non-financial equity issuance, what is the assets, so on and so forth. It shows that as asset increases, you are less likely to go for equity finance, but it is it is not significant. But in case of bond equation, as asset increases, you are more likely to go for issuing bonds. That means compared to internal source of finance. Now, what you have to do, you have to take all this result, get the interpretation, and then you have to match with the finance literature. You have to explain why this is happening taking help from the finance literature. You cannot simply say this variable is significant, that variable is not significant. That is not financial research. That is a bad way of doing research. What is the good way of doing research? You take the value, interpret the coefficient, and see whether your coefficients are giving expected signs. So that means whether the signs are in line with the finance theory. If you cannot explain your coefficient in that way, then people will always ask you hundreds of questions, why this is so. And there is absolutely no meaning in doing econometric analysis if you cannot back your result with proper theory from the finance literature. Then this is another, another uh, model. This is again basically, this is a ordered profit model, another variant of profit model I am so sorry I could not discuss the theoretical discussion because time was very limited. But I can tell you only the context where we can actually apply ordered profit model. In ordered profit model, basically all the options are ordered. That means we assign some kind of value judgment. For example, when you fill the feedback form, many a time you come across a specific type of question, then they will ask you whether you agree, strongly agree, not at all agree like that. So strongly agree is higher than agree. Agree is again higher than not at all agree, right? So that means these options are attached with some value. For example, when you go for equity finance, bond finance and internal finance, if you believe that internal finance is better than uh, bond finance and bond finance is better than equity finance, then that is the way I have actually ordered my dependent variable. Is that clear? So I will always attach some kind of value judgment. What kind of value judgment you will attach that up to you? For example, let's say there are three modes of travel. One is by bus, another one is by train, and another one is by flight. For a particular individual, if the particular individual believes the flight mode of travel is better than uh, train and train mode of uh, travel is better than bus and bus mode of travel is better than uh, taking a bike then that is the way you have ordered that does not mean that in the sample everybody will have same type of ordering so given a sample i will then try to understand why different firms they have ordered their mode of financing in different ways but that specific information you must collect from the sample from the, when you are working with secondary data, it is difficult to get that type of ordering. Anyway, here 
it is a ordered profit model and then in ordered profit what we need to do is to understand why a particular individual why a particular firm is thinking equity mode of finance is better than let's say bond mode of finance so that is what is explained here so with this basically i am closing my discussion here as i said i have another meeting on seven o'clock but i still have another five to six minute to spend kindly ask you if you have any doubt in this particular uh, context that the uh, models we, we have explained and the examples what we have discussed sir uh, ordered profit model or audit and ordinal uh, logistic regression are same or something different no same same only okay you have only ordering the your dependent variable that that is little advanced level model so it is not simple logic and profit actually in the class of qualitative response model there are many models there are i can offer a full semester itself you can understand i can offer a full semester only on this topic forget about econometrics only on this topic application of qualitative response model in finance that would be a full semester so you can understand how vast is the topic is so let us concentrate our discussion only in logic, probit, and multinomial logic. For that, in strata multinomial, the same uh, command will be used. No, the command is m logit. Instead of logit, we have okay. to use m logit. Okay. And okay. each and every command is actually available on Google. Getting the command and estimating the model is not a great deal. But what is difficult is to understand the theoretical stuff of econometrics for example we were discussing why the coefficients are not direct measure of marginal effect that is not explained in strata for that we need to read the textbook or we need to discuss with someone who is actually involved in this subject it's a question in the chat box am i able to read uh... If you have any other questions, can you please ask? It's a question in the chat box. Uh, I'm not able to see the... Can anyone help me? Yes, sir, I'll help you by reading the question. The yeah. question goes like this. Should we be able to test the heteroscedacity, autocorrelation, multicollinearity, normality of the error, etc. in proper logic models? Exactly, yes, yes. very good How question. How to test very it good. using the data? No, the data I have not discussed, as I told you, since the time was very limited. But heteroscedasticity is very easy to check. For any model, you can just put VCE robust. After putting the command VCE robust, you will get the heteroscedasticity consistent standard error. Okay, absolutely no problem. Autocorrelation, we may not have to be bothered so much because here we are mostly working with cross-sectional data. If you work with panel data, then yes, of course, you have to check autocorrelation also by same method called Darby Watson and other methods. There are advanced methods available, but I'm sorry I could not discuss the theory portion. And something which I don't discuss in theory, I feel little uncomfortable to show you how to get the result in data. But your question is quite valid. All those tests are actually you need to uh, you need to perform. If you understand basic problems of heteroscedasticity, autocorrelation, multicollinearity is also easy to check. For multicollinearity, you can simply put VIF command, or uh, uh, that will give you what is the uh, is there any variable that is creating multicollinearity or not. So before estimating. When you specify the data set that time itself without putting any command in the command box, you just put C O R R command. C O R R. If you put C O R R, then data will give you the intervariable correlation. So you can easily understand whether there is any high degree of intercorrelation among those explanatory variables. Is this clear? May not be very clear because 
I'm not able to discuss in detail because first my nature is I will first discuss the theory and then only I will discuss the empirical part of it. Yes, sir. Thank you for the clarification. So participants, any more questions, please ask. If you have a doubt, instead of putting in chat box, please introduce yourself and ask the question so that I can get it. So the previous participant, yourself. Uh, host, please mute Dr. Muhammad. Yes, sir. Done, done. Okay. Yeah. So any other questions? So if uh, if you have no other question, we can conclude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can conclude the session. Uh, I'm sorry, I spent very little time. As I told you, this is a vast topic, so I could not uh, justify uh, the topic much. For which I'm really sorry. Uh, in future, if we have more time, so I will give uh, more justification for the topic itself because it's really not possible to explain things in uh, two hours. I'm very sorry for that. So, in future, probably uh, uh, we may have another occasion where we can discuss in detail about this qualitative response model. Yeah. Yes, sir. Sure. We can have uh, more offline sessions uh, with you uh, in future. So, yeah. university uh, will invite you for that. So, thank yeah. you so much for the uh, wonderful lecture. Today, we have more integrated, the three sections were more integrated with the finance topics. Now, the participants have got some ideas uh, in which uh, areas in which the probit logic model can be applied so sure. you can extend uh, with this uh, and you can uh, you have got a value additions of this session and can be used uh, for your research and making papers and all so thank you so much uh, sir uh, for the wonderful lecture in this session thank you thank you uh, biju for the opportunity once again yeah yeah thank, thank you, you sir it's my privilege yeah. and honor to extend my sincere gratitude to Dr. Sabuj Kumar Mandal. You have definitely given us an interactive in spite of your busy schedule. We are grateful to you, sir, for spending your valuable time for this session. It was, in fact, a very enriching session, and I'm definitely sure that the participants have gained immense knowledge from you, sir. On behalf of the Department of Commerce, University of Kerala, and all the delegates present here, we thank you, sir. Thank you, Bhagavati. I just have one request for one or two seconds. You have talked, you have spoken so much about me. I just want to see you. Just one second, I'll switch on your video. Bhagavati? Yeah, yeah, sure, sir. She is with me. I mean, we are all, all sitting in, the, in our room. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. okay. okay. So she is an MPhil scholar of our department. Oh, okay. Very good. Very good. Okay. Uh, sir, hope I am visible. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you are visible. So what is your research topic, Bhagavati? Uh, sir, now I'm doing my topic on reverse logistics. Reverse logistics. Okay. 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 Fantastic. Sir, that is related to more, more on log, uh, supply chain, right? Uh, yes, sir. It's on supply chain. Yeah. Very good. So we have applications uh, in supply chain also. You can use this type of models uh, in supply chain as well. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you, sir. you. Okay. Thank okay. you so, so much. We are, we are concluding our session uh, uh, here. Thank you, sir. Okay. You may leave. Yeah. So we can have validity to the session right now. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Good night. Yeah. Good night. Okay. Keep in touch, sir. Yeah. Yeah. So that's an end to our 10th uh, session workshop organized by the Department of Commerce, University of Kerala. And today we had with us Dr. Sabuj Kumar Mandal. And I'm sure that all of you had an enriching session. We are now moving on to our validatory session.